This morning on CBS 2 News, a fire burns down the Idaho Youth Ranch warehouse in Boise. How the fight against the blaze is progressing this morning and a look at the damage. Plus more Idahoans being forced out of their homes. The help that could keep you from facing eviction. And dust off your cowboy boots, the Snake River Stampede, it's back. How you can get in on the action. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. It is Tuesday, July 19th, 2022. A beautiful view out there this morning. Clear skies if you are heading out early, but pretty pleasant out there as far as temperatures. That chill, at least that breeze that moved through yesterday did help cool us a little bit. And it's nice as you're stepping out the door this morning. Good morning, Vasily. Good morning, Sarah. Yeah, it's definitely cooler this morning. We're looking at the uh, high 50s to low 60s range in the Treasure Valley right now, 63 right now in Boise, over in Caldwell, 59 degrees there, and down in Mountain Homes, 63 degrees there. Up in the mountains, it's looking very chilly over there this morning, 46 degrees in McCall right now. Today in Boise, however, going to be a very, very hot day, 98 degrees as the high. A clear morning and sunshine is expected early as well, but those hot temps will make themselves known this afternoon. Futurecast shown us what we can expect for the next few days, and little to no cloud cover in our neck of the woods. The Treasure Valley looking very clear over the next few days going into Thursday as well. High temperatures for today, as I said, 98 degrees here in Boise over in Emmett, 99 degrees expected there. In Ontario, 100 degrees is expected there, so we may see some triple digits in eastern Oregon. Down in Mountain Home, 98 degrees is expected there. And then up in the mountains, McCall is expected to reach 86 degrees as the high there. And then Adventure Cash showing you when you could maybe go mountain biking today. By 9 a.m., it'll be 70 degrees and that'll continue to heat up 83 degrees expected by 12 p.m. and then by 6 p.m. it'll reach 98 degrees so very high temperatures expected today stay hydrated and stay safe out there folks because it will definitely be a hot one. Hey beautiful toasty day thank you Vasily 502 on your Tuesday CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI we bring you team traffic all morning long this is a live look out there on I-84 both directions are looking good on this Tuesday, just what we like to see. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And we start with continuing coverage on the fire at the Idaho Youth Ranch Warehouse in Boise. It started yesterday afternoon and it's still smoldering as of this morning. Now, Idaho Youth CEO Scott Curtis, he says the fire, it was started in a cardboard box that was in an outdoor storage area. That then spread to the side of their building. Now, they say this fire will be a huge setback in their thrift store operations. But the thrift stores are huge. And so for us, tomorrow, it's really about assessing what's happened here. Um, and looking at how can we get back up to full operations as quickly as possible uh, because um, those funds are really needed for the programs. 125 workers were inside the building when the fire broke out. Thankfully, no one got hurt. The cause of the fire is still under investigation this morning. Crews will likely be on scene throughout the day to make sure that things are safe. Well, a fire is burning in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. It's the Moose Fire. It's scorched about a thousand acres so far. Fire bosses, they say it's very active and being pushed by dry, hot winds. There was a red flag warning in the area yesterday. They say to be advised, several Forest Service roads are closed in the Northwest Salmon area. And stay tuned, Idaho, not the only place seeing wildfires. In the next 15 minutes, we'll take a closer look at the high heat impact here in the U.S., in the West, and for others around the world. Well, switching gears this morning, the number of evictions, they're climbing here in the Treasure Valley. If you're struggling to come up with money to pay rent, there is help available. CBS 2's Angela Kernel shares some tips that could mean the difference between staying in your home or getting evicted. Over the last month, we've seen historic highs with the number of evictions happening in the Treasure Valley. Allie Robbie is the director of Jesse Tree. It's an organization that works to prevent evictions that she says are rising along with the cost of renting. Rent has increased by 40% in Ada County over the last couple of years. With growth in the Treasure Valley, I think rising rents are going to continue to be a challenge for a lot of folks. More people moving here 
even as more local landlords are cashing out and selling their rental properties. What's more, investment groups that own rental properties in Idaho are more aggressive in taking people to court who are behind on their payments. It's just creating kind of a perfect storm. If you're caught in that storm, she warns, you've got to show up in court. If you don't show up, you'll probably get a default judgment against you. Court is being held on Zoom, and a lot of folks we're seeing are older or disabled and on fixed incomes, and they might not know how to use Zoom, might not have a computer, or uh, even internet. Still, mediation is available through the courts. Jesse Tree can help with that. Also, Jesse Tree may be able to help with rental assistance. So far, they've distributed more than two of its three million in federal grant funds. The needs are so great. Even with that grant, Jesse Tree is turning away like 75% of the people who apply. Money is also available through both the Boise City Ada County Housing Authority or the Idaho Housing and Finance Association. Some people only need about 400 bucks. Some people need 4,000, some people need more. Uh, what's great right now is we do have flexibility to be able to get people what they need. Well, that is good news there. Well, you do have a chance to weigh in on the city of Boise's proposed 2023 budget. There's a public hearing today. The proposed general fund budget over $306 million. The mayor says it brings property tax relief to homeowners, directs resources to keep Boise safe and makes homes more affordable as well as taking climate action. The public hearing that starts today at six o'clock at Boise City Hall. Well, dust off your cowboy boots, folks. The 107th annual Snake River Stampede, it opens tonight in Nampa. The Stampede, it's recognized as one of the top 10 professional rodeos in the U.S. Now, many contestants already inside the Ford Idaho Center competing just to qualify. Fastest wildest show on earth, you know, because we have great competition in all the events, the bareback, bull riding. Now keep in mind you can buy tickets at the door or online. Now doors, they open at 530 each night. The rodeo, that starts at 7. For more information, we do have a link to the Snake River Stampede's website. You can find that on IdahoNews.com. And looking ahead, the most exciting event of the summer just a month away. CBS2 is proud to be the official TV sponsor of the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Now we've teamed up with radio stations, Town Square Media and CapEd Credit Union to make this year's event possible. Now for those of you new to the area, this is one of those family friendly events that you don't want to miss. It's a hot air balloon festival. The balloons, they launch from Ann Morrison Park in Boise in the morning. Now this year's event, it starts with CapEd Kids Day on Wednesday, August 31st. It's an opportunity for younger children, elementary, maybe early middle school aged children to come out and receive a free tethered hot air balloon ride. Tethered means that it's still at the ground with a rope. They go up maybe 25, 30 feet, but it gives them an uh, opportunity to be introduced to the wonder of flight. Parents and grandparents out there, it's a perfect photo and science opportunities for your kids and grandkids. You'll hear a lot more about the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic in the coming weeks. We have interviews lined up with the pilots for later this week. You don't want to miss it. The Spirit of Boise is August 31st through September 4th. All you need to know, it's on IdahoNews.com. Yeah, and on that note, Vasily, are, are you? how do you feel about heights? I am actually <laughs> terrified of heights. Okay. I don't think I could ever go in one of those. Um, so we won't balloons. put you going live in the balloon this year. Maybe, oh, no, maybe not. I will, I will start to just crumble <laughs> and my knees will start to buckle. I, I can't do it. Okay, we'll, do, we'll get it started. Maybe mm -hmm. maybe we can start off with like a little tethered ride yeah, or I'll maybe just standing, standing, standing in the, the basket. Yeah, we'll, maybe, we'll get you yeah, there. I'll, I'll work to it. I'll try. <laughs> we got time. No, no. All good. All good. Mm -hmm. It is a great event. And I know that many people looking forward to it. But at least as we're, you know, still still a little ways ahead mm -hmm. of us. We're still focused, you know, on right now in July, enjoying the temperatures, enjoying the conditions. I couldn't ask for anything better. It is very hot out there though. So we keep saying stay cool, but you can't beat this. 
Yeah, it's, it's definitely going to keep getting hotter today. And hopefully we can see this kind of weather when the balloon festival finally starts oh, yeah. up. It'll be, it'll be definitely really nice if we can get the same kind of weather conditions we've been getting over the past couple days. So the forecast highs across the western United States. Over in Denver, 96 degrees there. 90, uh, upper 90s pretty much throughout. And then we're seeing a lot of 100 degree temperatures as well. 100 degrees over there in Medford. Very, very hot temperatures over there as well. Futurecast showing you why we're seeing 98 degrees here in Boise. It's the low pressure we're seeing up north and to the south of us that's bringing the high pressure into our neck of the woods, which is bringing out those clear skies and allowing that sun to shine through, bringing out those high temperatures. Now those high temperatures across the Treasure Valley, we're looking at the upper 90s to 100 degrees in our area, 98 in Boise, 99 in Emmett, and then 100 degrees over in Eastern Oregon as well. So high temperatures temperatures there and then up in McCall 86 degrees up in the mountains so we're seeing high temperatures throughout the southern part of the gem state what to expect for the next few days toasty temperatures today lots of lot lots and lots of sunshine this week and we'll start turning hot tomorrow very very high temperatures expected tomorrow and thursday and we'll see sun throughout the weekend as well what to uh, the temperature trend for the next few days today we're going to reach 98 degrees but wednesday and thursday is we'll jump into triple digits friday will drop back down to 96 so we'll see that average temperature going into the weekend Whew, thank you, Vasily. Sweating just thinking about it. It is 5, 10 a.m. The good news, still a little cool out there as you're stepping out the door. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning. It is moving on along. All reports looking good this morning. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. Well, how well do you think your representative is doing in Congress? Today's number of the day looks at just that. Now, 31% of voters say their congressional representative is the best person for the job. 33% say the opposite. 20% are unsure. Meanwhile, 17% of voters don't know who their representative in Congress is. They want to do a little Google. All right, straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning. Hot weather impacting people around the world. The scorching temperatures in Europe putting people in danger and later staying safe out on Idaho's roads. What to see or what you need to do if you see a pedestrian out on the street. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. 25% of drivers say they've nearly been in an accident because of this. The answer, sun glare. Honestly, thought it'd be a little higher. I, I actually noticed it on my way home yesterday. Um, a little bit more of that sun glare out there. Be safe. Now for today's question, about 130 million Americans, they do this every year, usually in the summer. All right, folks, what do you think it is? Here's a look at your CBS2 adventure weather local forecast. Here's a look at your CBS2 adventure weather local forecast over in Emmett. 99 degrees expected today as the highs of very high temperatures. That'll drop to 64 degrees by tonight. But tomorrow, no relief is expected. 103 degrees expected in Emmett tomorrow. Very, very high temperatures. Stay safe over there, folks. And then over in Cascade, 88 degrees as the high today. That'll drop to 48 tonight. And then it'll increase right back up to 92 degrees by tomorrow. Thank you, Vasily. Well, millions of people in Europe sweltering through a historic heat wave this week. It sparked wildfires and caused already thousands of deaths. It sent temperatures soaring as much as 30 degrees above normal. Now, more than 1,100 people have died due to heat just in Spain and Portugal. That's where temperatures, they soared as high as 117 degrees over the weekend. That actually rivals the Sahara. Now, record temperatures were set in southwest France, too, where fires are currently out of control, burning at least 37,000 acres and forcing over 30,000 to evacuate. Meantime, in the United Kingdom, residents, they're bracing for what could be Britain's hottest day ever recorded. I want to be by the sea, and that global warming's really a thing. Now, flights had to be diverted from two airports after the tarmac started melting, and train tracks, they were painted white to help stop them 
from buckling. Now, these scorching temperatures are expected to spread into Belgium and Germany in the coming days. Well, back here on the west coast, a fire in California burning dangerously close to homes this morning. A blaze already burning down homes, despite only covering about 60 acres, according to the last update. Now, firefighters, they're launching aggressive air attacks to try to stop the flames from getting any bigger. Now, dry and windy conditions are threatening to turn this blaze into an uncontrollable mega fire. That's when it creates its own weather. Now, as of this morning, the fire is still at 0% containment. And speaking of the heat, animal shelters across the U.S., they're trying to keep pets cool this summer. A shelter in Texas is asking for more foster homes as they're trying to keep pets out of these high temperatures. They're struggling with capacity. Keeping their animals indoors, they say, is becoming a lot harder. Any type of help, you know, is, is greatly appreciated because they don't stop coming in. Director Rene Vasquez and his team took to social media over the weekend, posting about the need for hot weather fosters. They say even if it's just for a day, they say they have around 60 animals right now outside without air conditioning. Oh, look at that face. As I say, we need to fly him here to Idaho, find mm -hmm. him a little bit cooler temperatures. Yeah. Well, a little, a little bit cooler temperatures, little bit cooler. silly. If they a, came a right bit. now, it'd be a little bit cooler. But today, we are not an outlier. We're going to be expecting those hot temperatures today. How as dare well. you do this to me? <laughs> I was going to say on Tuesday of all days. All yeah. right. Well, it's it's something that we expect every year. Mm -hmm. uh, the good thing, at least, what we were, I was talking about yesterday with a few people. The good news, we don't we're not socked in with smoke yet, which exactly. is at least last year. I mean, I was looking at uh, Time Hop. So again, it's an app where you look back in time at uh, previous years but completely socked in with smoke mm -hmm. last year. So at least we're breathing a little bit, a little bit easier this year, but you still need to keep that top of mind. It yeah, is very we're, dry. We're dealing with some very clear air right now. It's, it's going to be nice today. It's just going to be very, very hot. So be prepared for that. Temperatures right now, though, are on the cooler side for sure. We're looking at the high 50s to low 60s throughout the Treasure Valley. Over in Boise right now, it is 63 degrees. And then in Caldwell, it is 59 degrees there. Up in the mountains, however, it's already very very cold 46 degrees in McCall 31 degrees in Stanley right now so up high in the mountains it's very cold you're out the door forecast for you it's going to continually get hot throughout the day by 11 o'clock it'll be 79 degrees that'll jump up to 93 degrees by three o'clock and then by seven o'clock it'll be 97 98 which is the high temperatures for today 98 degrees in Boise is the high 86 up there in McCall very very high temperatures expected and we can expect that for the next few days as well Wednesday and Thursday are expected to reach the century mark, 101 degrees on Wednesday and 100 degrees on Thursday. By the weekend, we'll drop back down to around the average at 94 degrees, and then by Monday, we'll jump up to 98 degrees. Over in the mountains, we're seeing a similar trend as well, where Wednesday and, Wednesday and Thursday will be the hottest days of the week at 89 degrees. That'll drop this weekend to about the average, a little bit above average, 84, 85, 86 going into Sunday. So sunny and hot temperatures expected throughout the summer southern part of the gem state. Ooh, all right, thank you, Vasily. It is 519 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning live. A live look out there this morning for your commute. Looking good out there. Uh, no reports of anything, not much happening. So good news there. When you do eventually get in the car, you want to make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And before we go, here's today's Traffic Tip Tuesday from Boise Police Corporal Kyle Wills. Hello everybody, Corporal Kyle Wills back with Traffic Tip Tuesday this week. It is another beautiful summer day. And what do we have with summer? A lot more pedestrians and bicyclists on our roadways. So I wanna talk a little bit about some pedestrian and vehicle safety today. What does the law say when it comes to pedestrians crossing the street? We have a lot of intersections in the city of Boise and throughout the state of Idaho that are unmarked. In other words, there's not a crosswalk or there's not a traffic light there. And so what do we do in those, in those type of situations? And what the law says is once somebody has left the curb to show that they're crossing the street, then vehicle traffic is required to stop and allow that pedestrian to cross the street. So this just happened the other day. I was behind a vehicle. Uh, there was a gentleman cr trying to cross at an intersection that's unmarked, no traffic signal, no light, nothing like that. And uh, as he stepped out into the roadway, the car right in front of me just went right on through the intersection and did not yield that right of way to allow him to cross the street. As a matter of fact, I had another vehicle kind of pointing at him, the pedestrian, trying to get me to talk to him about safety when in reality, cars are required to yield 
world to the pedestrian in that situation. So just remember, we all share the road. We want everybody to get to where they're going safely, and we want to make sure and stop when a pedestrian is in the street, whether that's a child or an adult, because there's a lot out on these beautiful summer days right now. So that's our Traffic Tip Tuesday this week. Take care, everybody. Buckle up, buckaroo. Thank you, Corporal Will. Still to come on CBS2 News this morning, some COVID treatments having trouble tackling the latest variants, why they appear to be less effective. And later, looking ahead at this week's hearing on January 6th, who's expected to testify in what may be the last public hearing. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. 524 on your Tuesday. Welcome back. Yet another hidden hazard of COVID-19 pandemic is showing up in area doctor's offices and hospitals. Now the drugs we used to be able to use to treat deadly infections they're not working anymore. Now, medical reporter Liz Bonus explains why. Hey there, everybody. One of the reasons we're hearing a lot these days about getting the right treatment with antivirals if you're diagnosed with COVID-19 is that a new report shows drug-resistant infections and people dying from them jumped in the pandemic, and we need to turn this trend around. For years, it had been on the decline, but since COVID-19 hit... Antibiotic resistant bacteria have increased dramatically since COVID came along. So much so that this report just released from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention shows nearly 30,000 people died from infections resistant to antibiotics in just the first year of the pandemic. That's about a 15% jump from the previous reporting time. The number is also likely really higher because the CDC said half of the 18 different infections we can't treat well right now had numbers not available or delayed. This is likely all happening. In large part because we had to use a lot of antibiotics to treat patients with COVID who had uh, bacterial infections in their lungs as a complication of COVID. You see, the more antibiotics get used against infections, our bodies build up a tolerance or resistance to them. Then when we need them, they don't work, raising the risk of dying from an illness that could be prevented. Prior to COVID, by 2050, studies had suggested we would have more deaths every year from, can from uh, antibiotic-resistant infections than cancer, diabetes, and motor vehicle accidents combined. Doctor of Pharmacy Zach Jenkins of Ohio's Cedarville University says the problem is so bad right now, the World Health Organization calls this one the silent pandemic. If you did notice recently that your doctor didn't prescribe antibiotics right away until you had proper testing to find out what was really wrong, this is likely what's behind that decision. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Well, most people who drink do it socially, but during the pandemic, more Americans have started drinking alone. Now, a new study from Carnegie Mellon University finds it could be a big warning sign for future problems with alcohol. Now, it found young people who drink alone are about 86% more likely to have alcohol use disorder symptoms. Experts recommend parents speak to their teenagers about better coping mechanisms like exercise or meditation. Well, still to come on CBS2 News, we're getting closer to one of the most exciting events of the summer, what you can look forward to at this year's Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. And look at what's coming up tonight on CBS2. After all your favorites, you can join us for CBS2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. Here it is. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS2 News, a fire burning down the Idaho Youth Ranch warehouse in Boise. How the fight against the blaze is progressing this morning and a look at the damage. Plus, more Idahoans being forced out of their homes. The help that could keep you from facing an eviction. And dust off your cowboy boots, the Snake River Stampede, it's back. How you can get in on the action. CBS2 News This Morning starts now.
Temperatures outside right now are much cooler right now than it's been the past couple days. Uh, high 50s to low 60s in the Treasure Valley area. 63 right now in Boise. Over in Caldwell, 59 degrees there. 63 down in Mountain Home. And then up in the mountains, a lot cooler. 46 in McCall and 31 in Stanley. Today in Boise, high temperatures expected. 98 degrees here in Boise. Clear morning with sunshine early. Those hot temperatures will start to kick in this afternoon. Futurecast showing us what we can expect for the next few days in terms of cloud cover. We're seeing little to no cloud cover in our neck of the woods, especially during Wednesday night. And through Wednesday th in the Treasure Valley, it'll be very, very clear, allowing that sun to shine and bringing out these high temperatures. 98 degrees over in Boise today is the high. 100 degrees in Eastern Oregon. 99 in Emmett today. Uh, 86 degrees expected in McCall as the high in the mountains. And then Idaho City also looking very hot at 93 degrees. If you're looking to go mountain biking today, the morning is the best time to do it. It'll be 70 degrees by 9 a.m. Uh, 12 p.m. it'll be 83 degrees leading up to our high today of 98 degrees by 6 p.m. So very hot out there today. Stay hydrated out there, folks. Good advice. Thank you, Vasily. 531 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. A few more headlights out there this morning and a little look at first light, but everything looking good. No reports of anything to slow you down this morning. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And we do start with continuing coverage on this fire at the Idaho Youth Ranch Warehouse in Boise. Now it did start yesterday afternoon. It's still smoldering as of this morning. Now Idaho Youth CEO Scott Curtis, he says the fire, it was started in a cardboard box in an outdoor storage area that then spread to the side of the building. They say this fire, it'll be a huge setback in their thrift store operations. But the thrift stores are huge, and so for us, tomorrow it's really about assessing what's happened here um, and looking at how can we get back up to full operations as quickly as possible uh, because uh, those funds are really needed for the programs. Around 125 workers were inside that building when the fire broke out. Thankfully, no one was hurt. The cause of the fire is still under investigation, though crews will likely be on scene throughout the morning to make sure things stay safe. Well, a wildfire is burning in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. It's the Moose Fire. It's now scorched about a thousand acres so far. Fire bosses, they say it's very active, being pushed by dry, hot winds. There was a red flag warning in effect yesterday. Now be advised, several Forest Service roads are closed northwest of the city of Salmon. Well, switching gears, the number of evictions climbing here in the Treasure Valley. So if you're struggling to come up with money to pay rent, there is help still available. Our CBS 2's Angela Kirtle shares some tips that could mean the difference between staying in your home or getting evicted. Over the last month, we've seen historic highs with the number of evictions happening in the Treasure Valley. Ali Robbie is the director of Jesse Tree. It's an organization that works to prevent evictions that she says are rising along with the cost of renting. Rent has increased by 40% in Ada County over the last couple of years. With growth in the Treasure Valley, I think rising rents are going to continue to be a challenge for a lot of folks. More people moving here even as more local landlords are cashing out and selling their rental properties. What's more, investment groups that own rental properties in Idaho are more aggressive in taking people to court who are behind on their payments. It's just creating kind of the perfect storm. If you're caught in that storm, she warns, you've got to show up in court. If you don't show up, you'll probably get a default judgment against you. Court is being held on Zoom and a lot of folks we're seeing are older or disabled and on fixed incomes and they might not know how to use Zoom, might not have a computer or uh, even internet. Still, mediation is available through the courts. Jesse Tree can help with that. Also, Jesse Tree may be able to help with rental assistance. So far, they've distributed more than two of its three million in federal grant funds. The needs are so great. Even with that grant, Jesse Tree is turning away like 75% of the people who apply. Money is also available through both the Boise City Ada County Housing Authority or the Idaho Housing and Finance Association. Some people only need about 400 bucks 
Some people need 4,000, some people need more. Uh, what's great right now is we do have flexibility to be able to get people what they need. Now, do keep in mind that is CBS 2's Angela Kerndall who is reporting. She will be staying on top of, again, these rental issues across the Treasure Valley and keep you updated. Now, switching gears this morning, you have a chance to weigh in on the City of Boise's proposed 2023 budget. There's a public hearing today. Now, the proposed general fund budget, it's over $306 million. The mayor says it brings property tax relief for homeowners, directs resources to keep Boise safe, and makes homes more affordable as well as taking climate action. Now, now the public hearing that starts at six o'clock at Boise City Hall. And dust off your cowboy boots, folks. The 107th annual Snake River Stampede, it opens tonight in Nampa. Now, the Stampede, it's recognized as one of the top 10 professional rodeos in the U.S. Now, many contestants already inside the Ford Idaho Center competing just to qualify. Fastest wildest show on earth, you know, because we have great competition in all the events, the bareback, bull riding. Now, tickets are available for purchase both online and at the door. Doors open at 530 each night when the rodeo kicks off. That'll be 7 o'clock sharp. For more information, we do have a link to the Snake River Stampede's website. You can find that on IdahoNews.com. And looking ahead, the most exciting event of the summer just a month away. CBS2 proud to be an official TV sponsor of the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. Now we're teaming up with the radio stations of Town Square Media and CapEd Credit Union to make this year's event possible. Now for those of you new to the area, this is one of those family friendly events that you don't want to miss. It's a hot air balloon festival and the balloons they launch from Ann Morrison Park in Boise. This year's event starts with Cap Ed Kids Day, Wednesday, August 31st. It's an opportunity for younger children, elementary, maybe early middle school aged children to come out and receive a free tethered hot air balloon ride. Tethered means that it's still at the ground with a rope. They go up maybe 25, 30 feet, but it gives them an uh, opportunity to be introduced to the wonder of flight. Parents and grandparents, it's a perfect photo and science opportunity for both your kids and grandkids. You'll hear a lot more about the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic in the coming weeks. We have interviews lined up with those balloon pilots for later this week. You'll want to tune in. Spirit of Boise is August 31st through September 4th. All you need to know is on IdahoNews.com. Lots of fun. What an awesome site. That looks so cool. Oh, it's one of my favorite events mm -hmm. of the year, and I know many people at home agree the same thing. But one of my favorite parts of it, not only of course the balloons, but being able to see the sunrise as those balloon rise, Ooh. those balloons rise Probably as well. Pictures. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be gorgeous, excited, and I hope all of you can be there. And hopefully at least temperatures will be a little bit cooler once it rolls around next month because triple digits again in store today? Yeah, triple digits are almost in store today. We're almost. in store for them tomorrow and the next day. Today we're going to get really, really close. As you can see on your screen, 98 degrees expected here in Boise today. We're seeing all around high temperatures throughout the western part of the United States. Over in Medford, 100 degrees there in southern Oregon. Very, very hot there and 106 in Redding in northern California as well. 109 in Las Vegas and then whew, Death Valley, 108. 18. So very, very high temperatures throughout. Futurecast showing us why we are experiencing those high temperatures in our neck of the woods. It's that low pressure coming from the north and also to the southeast of us that is bringing in that high pressure to our area that is bringing out those clear skies and those high temperatures you can see on your screen now. 98 degrees here in Boise, as I said. 99 degrees over in Emmett. 100 degrees in eastern Oregon expected today. 98 down in Mountain Home and then up in the mountains, 86 degrees in McCall, 84 degrees in Stanley, and then 93 degrees expected in Idaho City. What to expect for the next few days? Very toasty temperatures today, lots of sunshine this week as well, and then tomorrow is where it's going to start to turn hot and sunny throughout the weekend as well. We're, we'll see sunny, uh, sunny conditions throughout the week as well. 98 degrees expected today, and that'll jump up to 101 on Wednesday, and even 102 on Thursday. That'll drop back down to 96, which is about the average this weekend. So we'll see hot temperatures throughout this week. Thank you, Vasily. Oh, it is going to be another toasty one, folks. But it is Tuesday, 540 at that. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything 
running nice out there this morning, both on main roads, secondary roads, whether you're heading eastbound, westbound. When you do, though, eventually get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KVOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. Well, how well do you think your representative in Congress is doing? That's today's number of the day. Looks at just that. 31% of voters say their congressional representative is the best person for the job. 33% say the opposite. 20% they're unsure. Meanwhile, 17% of voters don't know who their representative in Congress is. You may want to do a little Google search if you're in that group. All right, time for our question of the day. That question is about 130 million Americans do this every year, usually in the summer. Okay, Vasily, what are we thinking? Well, I'm thinking it has something to do with water because it says usually during the summer. And I'm not thinking swimming because I feel like that'd be more people. <laughs> so maybe something like boating, some some kind of water activity, boating or like inner tubing or no, definitely. any kind of floating. I I'd guess. have to. Yeah, no, I was thinking camping maybe. Um, it's a big thing. Obviously, everyone does during this time of the year. Being out on the water. Mm, let's see. Maybe zip lining. Let's throw, let's throw, That's let's do one. some Hail I like Marys. Zip, I don't know. What, yeah. what are some crazy zip things people do? It, they've been pretty, they've been pretty niche. So um, <laughs> zip lining is a pretty good one there. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh vacation. I like That's that one, one, Jen. I could, I could do with a beach right about now. I don't know about you. Ooh, let's see so nice. what else. Telemacho says planting a garden Ooh. after my own heart. Yep. I was going to say maybe, maybe not right now when it's, you know, those triple yeah. digits, it does have some difficult growing, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, no, one of my favorite parts of the summer. Jay. Says yeah. camping. Agrees with you. Wow, camping's a good one. I, I didn't think about that one. Yeah, I was going to say, we have some beautiful places. That's why we live here, guys. All right, well, if you think you know the answer, you say, guys, you're way off base. You can still guess. Head on over to our Facebook page and, of course, Twitter. We'll continue to read some of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News This Morning, families renewing calls for accountability in Uvalde, Texas. Why the new report on the police response to the school shooting there has them up in arms. Here's a look at your CBS 2 adventure weather local forecast over in Emmett. 99 degrees there today, very high temperatures. That'll drop to 64 tonight, but by tomorrow it's going to jump up to 103 degrees in Emmett. Very, very high temperatures over there, so stay safe out there, folks, and stay hydrated in the, up in the mountains in Cascade. 88 degrees expected to there. Very warm for that neck of the for that region as well. T tonight it'll drop to uh, 48 degrees and then by tomorrow it'll jump back up to 92 degrees over there in Cascade. Thank you, Vasily. It is 545 on your Tuesday. Texas's Department of Public Safety says it's reviewing the actions of every single police officer who responded to the Uvalde school shooting that claimed the lives of two teachers and 19 fourth graders. Now, a preliminary report report says inaction by law enforcement may have contributed to the tragedy. Now, CBS's Harvey Biggs has the latest, including parents once again demanding accountability. Grief and anger continue to be on display in Uvalde, Texas. For the injustice that has gone to our children. This was the scene last night as angry parents and residents sounded off at the local school board meeting. They want to know what is being done to safeguard the schools in the future. Many also calling for District Police Chief Pete Arredondo to be let go. If he's not fired by noon tomorrow, then I want your resignation and every single one of you board members because y'all do not give a damn about our children or us. State police officials have blamed Arredondo for failing to take charge of the situation. But a preliminary report just released by Texas House Investigative Committee says other agencies should have stepped up and assumed command. The investigation found, quote, egregiously poor decision making at the heart of the botched response to the shooting. We gotta get in there. We gotta get in there. He just keeps shooting. Surveillance video shows police arrived at the school within minutes of the first 911 calls. A total of 376 law enforcement officers from nearly two dozen federal, state, and local agencies descended on the scene. They waited over an hour before moving to take the gunman down. Hey, we're going in or we're staying here? What are we doing? School officials told parents they're considering delaying the start of next school year to make sure more safety measures are in place. Harvey Biggs, CBS News, New York. 
Now, Chief Arundondo, he's been placed on administrative leave, as has the acting chief of the city's police on the day of that school shooting. While well, switching gears heading to Washington, two former White House aides, they're expected to testify at Thursday's hearing from the January 6th committee. Now, the AP reports that former Deputy National Security Advisor Matthew Pottinger and former press aide Sarah Matthews are the two testifying in this hearing. Now, both of them resigned from the Trump White House after the events on January 6th. Now, Thursday's hearing will be the eighth and possibly the final hearing, but the committee says the investigation is still active. Well, Russian President Vladimir Putin visiting Iran today. The Kremlin says Putin's participating in talks with Iranian and Turkish leaders about issues in the region. Now, Putin's visit comes after U.S. officials said last week that they believe Iran is preparing to supply Russia with aerial vehicles to use in its ongoing war. Now, it also comes just days after President Biden visited Israel and Saudi Arabia in the Middle East. Well, the U.S. expected to soon put more sanctions on Russia as it's continuing its invasion into Ukraine. Now, those sanctions may impact our already high gas prices. Here in Idaho, the average sitting around 5.11 a gallon. That is 61 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up will be Costco. You can get it there for $4.95 a gallon, about a five cent decrease. Well, the U.S. Attorney's Office and the Department of Labor are investigating workplace safety allegations at Amazon. Now, there are also accusations of fraudulent efforts to hide workers' injuries from regulators. The U.S. Attorney's Office also says they're looking at Amazon's required workplace for warehouse employees. Now, on Monday, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, they inspected warehouses in New York City, Orlando and Chicago. Well, Twitter officials and Elon Musk are set for a meeting today to find out how soon they're going to trial. Now, the two parties fighting over the $44 billion company takeover that was in the works. Musk trying to end the deal now, accusing the social media platform of lying about the number of spam accounts it has. Now, Twitter has denied those claims and is suing to force Musk to finish the deal. The company is now accusing Musk of delaying tactics to hurt the company's reputation. Musk has asked for a trial to start next year. Yeah, going to drag that on out. All right. Another thing we're dragging out, of course, is those triple digit temperatures back in the forecast. Very dry outside. That's the one thing I'm noticing, um, at least for my garden. It's because it's on my mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Telemacho <laughs> from earlier. But yeah, no, you definitely need to make sure you give them that extra water, a little bit of extra love if you are a gardener like myself, because yeah, triple digits, maybe not today, but they are going to hang on for quite some time. So mm -hmm. we're kind of buckling on in. Yeah, very, very dry temperatures today and also throughout the week we're going to see those dry just conditions and high temperatures as well it right now we're looking at the high 50s to low 60s throughout the treasure valley in boise right now 63 degrees there over in caldwell six or 59 degrees there and then in eastern oregon we're at 60 degrees up in the mountains it's very very cool right now 46 degrees in mccall and then 31 degrees in Stanley. So high elevations are definitely feeling cooler right now. Your out the door forecast for Boise, it's going to start heating up very, very quickly. By 1 p.m. it'll be 87 degrees and that'll jump up to 96, 97 degrees by 5 and 7 p.m. High temperatures today, we are going to reach that 98 mark here. 99 degrees expected over in Emmett and then 100 degrees over in Ontario. In Idaho City will be 93 degrees as the high and then up in the mountains 86 degrees over in McCall and 84 degrees expected in Stanley. Now over the, uh, the extended forecast for you, Tuesday is going to be, as I said, 98 and by Wednesday and Thursday, those will jump into the triple digits. Friday, Saturday, Sunday will stick around the average, maybe a little bit higher than the average on Sunday going into Monday as well, which will be above average. And then in the mountains, uh, by Wednesday and Thursday is where we'll see the hottest temperatures of the week at 89 degrees. Those will drop back down to around the average as well by the weekend, and Monday will heat back up again. Oh, thank you, Vasily. Yep, guys, it is hot out there this morning, but at least as you're stepping out the door, a little cooler. All right, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. It is 552 on your Tuesday. Looking good out there. Yeah, a few more headlights moving along this morning, but 
I-84 is looking good, both eastbound and westbound. No reports to mention. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News, the location of the 2028 Olympic Games announced how the city of Los Angeles is celebrating as the Games head back to the U.S. And our chime in photo of the day, it's a shot from downtown. Ooh, look at that. Thank you to Logan for sending this in. Beautiful. To submit your photos, you can head to IdahoNews.com slash chime in. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 5.55 on your Tuesday. Welcome back. MLB All-Star Game. It's tonight. Los Angeles is hosting the world's largest baseball festival at the Convention Center. Yeah, take a look at this. Now, a traveling Hall of Fame set up at the Convention Center as people get ready for the All-Star Game later on tonight. We're a gigantic footprint in DTLA. MLB Live in DTLA is what we've been calling it. Uh, plenty of activities outdoors for fans. We have a block party. We have DJs. We have, we have a house band because you know everybody in LA has the house band. Now the American League All-Star team taking on the National League All-Star team. That game, it starts tonight at 6 o'clock sharp. And looking ahead, the 2028 Olympic and Paralympic Games will be held in Los Angeles. Now this will be the first time that Los Angeles will host the Paralympic Games. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti made the announcement at the Exhibition Park on Monday. I'm just proud of LA for winning this. Um, we won the gold medal already, but I'm really proud of getting the Paralympics for the first time. Um, you know, third time for Olympics is an honor beyond what most cities get, but I also hope that we'll take this to make LA the most accessible city in the country. The grand ceremony will take place at the LA Memorial Coliseum and SoFi Stadium out in Inglewood. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, we're getting closer to one of the most exciting events of the summer, what you can look forward to at this year's Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. And staying safe on the roads, what you need to know if you see a pedestrian out on the street. You are watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com. We'll be back with your headlines at the top of the hour. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. This morning on CBS 2 News, a fire burns down the Idaho Youth Ranch warehouse in Boise. How the fight against the blaze is progressing this morning and a look at the damage. Plus more Idahoans being forced out of their homes. The help that could keep you from facing an eviction. Plus dust off your cowboy boots, the Snake River Stampede, it's back. How you can get in on the action. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. This is a live look of downtown Boise on this Tuesday, July 19th, 2022. A beautiful start to the morning. Sun starting to shine. And as you're heading out the door, it's actually pretty mild out there this morning. Good morning, Vasily. Good morning, Sarah. Yeah, very mild this morning. We're looking at 62 degrees here in Boise right now, 59 degrees over in Caldwell, and we're looking at the high 50s to low 60s range throughout the Treasure Valley this morning. Up in the mountains, 44 degrees in McCall and ooh, 29 degrees in Stanley. Very, very chilly morning up in the mountains today. Over in Boise today, we're expecting a high of 98 degrees, a clear morning with the sunshine coming in early, but hot temperatures are expected to roll in this afternoon, peaking at 98 degrees. Future cash showing us what we can expect for today and the next few days, and you're seeing little to no cloud cover in the Treasure Valley, especially on Wednesday, where we may be seeing triple digit temperatures. I'll let you know a little bit more about that in a second. But as for today, temperatures are going to be high, 98 degrees, 98 degrees also in Caldwell, 100 degrees expected over in Eastern Oregon in Ontario, down in Mountain Home, 98 degrees expected 
expected there and up in McCall, 86 degrees is expected as a high there. Thank you, Vasily. 601 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bringing team traffic all morning long. Live look out there this morning. Looking good. Moving on along. That's what we like to see on the early morning hours. So when you do eventually go out, get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. It is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And we start with continuing coverage on the fire at the Idaho Youth Ranch Warehouse out in Boise. Now it started yesterday afternoon, still smoldering as of this morning. Idaho Youth CEO Curtis Scott Curtis says the fire, it was started in a cardboard box in an outdoor storage area. Now, when it spread, it got to the side of the building. Now, what they say this fire, it'll be a huge setback in their thrift store operations. But the thrift stores are huge, and so for us, tomorrow it's really about assessing what's happened here um, and looking at how can we get back up to full operations as quickly as possible uh, because uh, those funds are really needed for the programs. Well, about 125 workers were inside the building when the fire broke out. Thankfully, though, no one got hurt. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Crews will be on scene throughout the morning to make sure things are staying safe. Well, a wildfire is burning in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. It's the Moose Fire. It's scorched about 1,000 acres so far. Fire bosses, they say it's still very active, being pushed by dry, hot winds. There was a red flag warning in the area yesterday. And be advised, several Forest Service roads are now closed northwest of the town of Salmon. And stay tuned, Idaho, not the only place seeing wildfires. In the next 15 minutes, we'll take a closer look at the high heat impacts here in the west and for others around the world. Well, switching gears, the number of evictions, they're climbing here in the Treasure Valley. If you're struggling to come up with the money to pay rent, help is available. CBS 2's Angela Kerndall shares some tips that could mean the difference between staying in your home or getting evicted. Over the last month, we've seen historic highs with the number of evictions happening in the Treasure Valley. Ali Rabi is the director of Jesse Tree. It's an organization that works to prevent evictions that she says are rising along with the cost of renting. Rent has increased by 40% in Ada County over the last couple of years. With growth in the Treasure Valley, I think rising rents are going to continue to be a challenge for a lot of folks. More people moving here, even as more local landlords are cashing out and selling their rental properties. What's more, investment groups that own rental properties in Idaho are more aggressive in taking people to court who are behind on their payments. It's just creating kind of the perfect storm. If you're caught in that storm, she warns, you've got to show up in court. If you don't show up, you'll probably get a default judgment against you. Court is being held on Zoom, and a lot of folks we're seeing are older or disabled and on fixed incomes, and they might not know how to use Zoom, might not have a computer, or uh, even internet. Still, mediation is available through the courts. Jesse Tree can help with that. Also, Jesse Tree may be able to help with rental assistance. So far, they've distributed more than two of its three million in federal grant funds. The needs are so great. Even with that grant, Jesse Tree is turning away like 75% of the people who apply. Money is also available through both the Boise City Ada County Housing Authority or the Idaho Housing and Finance Association. Some people only need about 400 bucks. Some people need 4,000. Some people need more. Uh, what's great right now is we do have flexibility to be able to get people what they need. Well, switching gears, you have a chance to weigh in on the City of Boise's proposed 2023 budget. There's a public hearing today. The proposed general fund budget, it's over $306 million. The mayor says it brings property tax relief for homeowners, directs resources to keep Boise safe, and makes homes more affordable as well as taking climate action. Now that public hearing, it starts at 6 o'clock at Boise City Hall. Well, dust off your cowboy boots, folks. The 107th annual Snake River Stampede, it opens in Nampa tonight. The Stampede, it's recognized as one of the top 10 professional rodeos in the U.S. Now, many contestants already inside the Ford Idaho Center competing just to qualify. Fastest wildest show on earth, you know, because we have great competition in all the events, the bareback, bull riding. 
Tickets are available for purchase both online and at the door. Doors open each night at 5.30. The rodeo starts at 7. For more information, we do have a link to the Stampede's website. You can find that on IdahoNews.com. And looking ahead, the most exciting event of the summer, just over a month away. CBS2 is proud to be the official TV sponsor of the Spirit of Boise Bloom Classic. Now, we've teamed up with the radio stations of Town Square Media and CapEd Credit Union to make this year's event possible. Now, for those of you new to the area, it's one of those family-friendly events that you don't want to miss. It's a hot air balloon festival, and those balloons, they launch each and every morning from Ann Morrison Park in Boise. This year's event starts with Cap Ed's Kids Day. That's on Wednesday, August 31st. It's an opportunity for younger children, elementary, maybe early middle school aged children to come out and receive a free tethered hot air balloon ride. Tethered means that it's still at the ground with a rope. They go up maybe 25, 30 feet, but it gives them an uh, opportunity to be introduced to the wonder of flight. Parents and grandparents, it's the perfect photo and science opportunity for your kids and grandkids. You'll hear a lot more about the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic in the coming weeks. We have interviews lined up with the pilots for later on this week. You want to stay tuned. The Spirit of Boise is August 31st through September 4th. All you need to know is on IdahoNews.com. Oh, lots of fun. Can't believe it's only a month away. Vasily, this will be your first Spirit of Boise mm -hmm. at that. Yeah, I know. I'm excited for it. It looks like a gorgeous setting, and I just want to see. I want to learn how those work, too. I don't oh. really understand how hot air balloons work. No, like, yeah. No, it's yeah. one of the cool things uh -huh. that you're able to learn when, when you know, you're around these balloons for a couple of years. And one of the cool things, Chief Meteorologist Roland Stedham, mm -hmm. he's our official meteorologist for the Spirit of Boise, so he really outlines everything for us. So. It's really fun to kind of take a, mm -hmm. a little science class, sit back, let the man do his job, and really kind of watch him work his magic with these balloons. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, no, I'm it, excited to hear. it's yeah. going to be cool stuff. All right, well, as far as temperatures today, it's another toasty one in store. Tell me more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're looking at a toasty day today with the high on your screen of 98 degrees here in Boise. Throughout the western part of the United States, we are seeing high temperatures over in Medford, just to the west of us, 100 degrees there. And in North California as well, 106 over in Redding and 103 in Sacramento. So high temperatures throughout, 97 degrees in Salt Lake and 96 over in Denver. Futurecast showing us why we're seeing high temperatures in our area. We're seeing low pressure to the south of us and to the north of us as well, which is bringing that high pressure into our neck of the woods, bringing out those blue skies and those high temperatures. You are seeing on your screen right now 99 degrees over in Emmett, 100 degrees in Ontario. Up in the mountains, McCall is looking at 86 degrees as the high today. Stanley at 84 in Idaho City at 93. Down in Mountain Home, they are looking at 98 degrees as well. What to expect for the next few days? Toasty temperatures today. Lots of sunshine is expected as well, and we are going to start turning hot tomorrow. Sun throughout the week and into the weekend as well. Looking like great great temperatures and the temperature trend has shown us just that some high temperatures as well Wednesday and Thursday are looking at 100 degrees 101 and 102 respectively we'll drop back down to 96 on Friday and Saturday which is about the average for this point in time so stay hydrated and stay safe out there folks it's going to be a hot one all right, thank you, Vasily. It is 610 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's get our first check out there on the roads from the News Talk Traffic Center's Ron O'Brien. Morning, Ron. How are you doing? Doing well. Good morning. Uh, yeah, very quiet start. That is usually the case this time of the morning. Traffic volumes light, including that Meridian area where we tend to get some uh, slowdowns at times, the uh, merge points, but uh, a little too early for that. And non-freeway areas are checking out real quiet this morning. From the News Talk KBOI traffic studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. That's what we like to hear. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, how well do you think your representative in Congress is doing? Today's number of the day looks at just that. Now, 31 percent of voters say their congressional representative is the best person for the job. 33 percent say the opposite and 20 percent are unsure. Meanwhile, 17 percent of voters don't know who their representative in Congress is. 
may do a little Googling this morning. All right, straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, hot weather impacting people around the world. The scorching temperatures in Europe putting people in danger. Plus, staying safe out on Idaho's roads. What to know if you see a pedestrian out on the street. And it is time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. 25% of drivers say they've nearly been in an accident because of this. The answer, sun glare. Something we see quite a bit here in the Treasure Valley. We are lucky with that sunshine. Just be safe out there. Now for today's question. About 130 million Americans do this every year, usually in the summer. All right, folks, what do you think it is? Here's a look at your CBS2 adventure weather local forecast over in Emmett. 99 degrees expected today. That'll drop down to 64 tonight, but by tomorrow it'll jump up to 103 degrees. Very, very high temperatures expected over in Emmett. And up in the mountains in Cascade, 88 degrees is expected as a high today. By tonight that'll drop down to 48 degrees, but by tomorrow it'll jump right back up. 92 degrees expected as the high in Cascade tomorrow. Thank you, Vasily. It is 615 on your Tuesday. Well, millions of people in Europe sweltering through a historic heat wave this week. It sparked wildfires and already caused thousands of deaths. It sent temperatures soaring as much as 30 degrees above normal. Now more than 1100 people have died due to the heat just in Spain and Portugal. That's where temperatures soared as high as 117 degrees this weekend. That actually rivals the Sahara in some areas. Now record temperatures were set in southwest France too, where fires are out of control, burning at least 37,000 acres, forcing about 30,000 people to evacuate. Meanwhile, in the UK, residents bracing for what could be Britain's hottest day ever recorded. I want to be by the sea, and the global warming is really a thing. Flights even had to be diverted from two airports after tarmac started melting. Train tracks were even painted white to stop them from buckling in the heat. These scorching temperatures are expected to spread into both Belgium and Germany in the coming days. Well, back here on the West Coast, a fire in California burning dangerously close to homes this morning. Now that blaze already burning down homes despite only covering around 60 acres, according to the last update. Now firefighters launching an aggressive air attack to try to stop the flames from getting any bigger. You know, dry and windy conditions are threatening to turn the blaze into an uncontrollable mega fire. That's when the fire creates its own weather activity. Now, as of this morning, that fire still 0% contained. Well, speaking of the heat, animal shelters across the U.S., they're trying to keep pets cool this summer. A shelter in Texas have asking more foster homes as they're trying to keep their pets out of high temperatures. They're struggling with capacity and keeping their animals indoors, they say, is becoming a lot harder. Any type of help, you know, is, is greatly appreciated because they don't stop coming in. Director Rene Vasquez and his team, they took to social media over the weekend, posting about the need for hot weather fosters, even if it's just for the day. They say they have about 60 animals right now outside without air conditioning. Look at that little face. Oh, Got to keep those pups cool. Yeah, it's like in any way that you can, even if it's just for a couple hours or for a day. And mm -hmm. that's the same here. I mean, it is very yeah. hot out there. You want to keep in mind that our pets paws, they're very happy to please. So while you want to go outside and enjoy some of the sunshine, the heat, yeah, our pets, however, they run quite a bit hotter than us. You want to keep them safe. Yeah, much more sensitive to the heat those pups are. And it's the fur too. They can heat, yeah. overheat really, really fast. Yeah, so keep in mind you want to keep them cool. Maybe indoors with the air conditioning would be best. But if you are going to take them out for a walk again, early morning and late after, well, at least late evening, pardon mm. me, it's still pretty warm when we head into the evenings as well. As yeah, we right. Now would be a great time to take your pup out for a walk. The temperatures are a lot cooler than they've been over the past couple days. A lot cooler. We're looking at high 50s to low 60s in the Treasure Valley right now. 62 degrees right now in Boise. Over in Caldwell, 59 degrees there. And then down in Mountain Home, 52 degrees there as well. Nampa's looking a little bit hotter too at 61. And then up in the mountains, 44 degrees over in McCall. If you're heading out the door today, it's going to be a lot cooler this morning, but it'll start to heat up very fast. By 1 p.m., it'll be 87 degrees. 
and that'll jump up all the way to 96 degrees, 97, 98, which is our high today. 98 degrees is the high, as I said. 98 also in Caldwell, and then over in Ontario, it's expected to be 100 degrees. Down in Mountain Home as well, it'll be 98 degrees there. So for the Treasure Valley, Wednesday and Thursday is where we will reach those 100 degree marks. By Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we'll drop back around the average of 94 degrees, and Sunday it'll be a little bit hotter at 96 degrees. Moving into Monday, it'll be 98 degrees there, so that heat will not be dissipating very soon. And in the mountains, we're seeing a similar trend. Wednesday, Thursday, it's going to be the hottest days of the week, and by Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we'll be around, if not above the average. Stick around for Roland Stead Chief Meteorologist Roland Stedham's forecast at 4, 5, 30, 9, and 10 today. Oh, thank you, Vasily. It's going to be a hot one. 619 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. Uh, doing fine. So far, very quiet. It's usually uh, pretty quiet this time of the morning because traffic volumes are on the light side. Even ID4 uh, around 10 mile Meridian Road. Not uh, doing bad at all. And quiet elsewhere. The uh, construction zone, Highway 44. Highway 16 towards Linder, the widening of that stretch of Highway 44 continues, but everybody getting through there this time of the morning, just fine. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And before we go, here's today's Traffic Tip Tuesday from Boise Police Corporal Kyle Wills. Hello everybody, Corporal Kyle Wills back with Traffic Tip Tuesday this week. It is another beautiful summer day. And what do we have with summer? A lot more pedestrians and bicyclists on our roadways. So I wanna talk a little bit about some pedestrian and vehicle safety today. What does the law say when it comes to pedestrians crossing the street? We have a lot of intersections in the city of Boise and throughout the state of Idaho that are unmarked. In other words, there's not a crosswalk or there's not a traffic light there. And so what do we do in those, in those type of situations? And what the law says is once somebody has left the curb to show that they're crossing the street, then vehicle traffic is required to stop and allow that pedestrian to cross the street. So this just happened the other day. I was behind a vehicle. Uh, there was a gentleman cr trying to cross at an intersection that's unmarked, no traffic signal, no light, nothing like that. And uh, as he stepped out into the roadway, the car right in front of me just went right on through the intersection and did not yield that right of way to allow him to cross the street. As a matter of fact, I had another vehicle kind of pointing at him, the pedestrian, trying to get me to talk to him about safety when in reality cars are required to yield to the pedestrian in that situation. So just remember, we all share the road. We want everybody to get to where they're going safely and we want to make sure and stop when a pedestrian is in the street, whether that's a child or an adult because there's a lot out on these beautiful summer days right now. So that's our traffic tip Tuesday this week. Take care, everybody. Buckle up, buckaroo. Yeah, buckle up, you buckaroos. All right, coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, some COVID treatments having trouble tackling the latest COVID variant, why they appear to be less effective. And later, looking ahead to this week's hearing on January 6th, who's expected to testify in what may be the last public hearing. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News This Morning. 624 on your Tuesday. Welcome back. Yet another hidden hazard of the COVID pandemic showing up in area doctor's offices and hospitals. Now the drugs we used to be able to use to treat deadly infections they're not working anymore. Now, medical reporter Liz Bonus explains why. Hey there, everybody. One of the reasons we're hearing a lot these days about getting the right treatment with antivirals if you're diagnosed with COVID-19 is that a new report shows drug-resistant infections and people dying from them jumped in the pandemic, and we need to turn this trend around. For years, it had been on the decline, but since COVID-19 hit... Antibiotic resistant bacteria have increased dramatically since COVID came along. So much so that this report just released from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention shows nearly 30,000 people died from infections resistant to antibiotics in just the first year of the pandemic. That's about a 15% jump from the previous reporting time. 
The number is also likely really higher because the CDC said half of the 18 different infections we can't treat well right now had numbers not available or delayed. This is likely all happening in large part because we had to use a lot of antibiotics to treat patients with COVID who had uh, bacterial infections in their lungs as a complication of COVID. You see, the more antibiotics get used against infections, our bodies build up a tolerance or resistance to them. Then when we need them, they don't work, raising the risk of dying from an illness that could be prevented. Prior to COVID, by 2050, studies had suggested we would have more deaths every year from, can from uh, antibiotic resistant infections than cancer, diabetes, and motor vehicle accidents combined. Dr. Pharmacy Zach Jenkins of Ohio's Cedarville University says the problem is so bad right now, the World Health Organization calls this one the silent pandemic. If you did notice recently that your doctor didn't prescribe antibiotics right away until you had proper testing to find out what was really wrong, this is likely what's behind that decision. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Still to come on CBS 2 News, we're getting closer to one of the most exciting events of the summer, what you can look forward to at this year's Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. And here's what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. After all your favorites, join us for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, a fire burns down the Idaho Youth Ranch Warehouse in Boise. How the fight against the blaze is progressing this morning and a look at the damage. Plus, more Idahoans being forced out of their homes. The help that could keep you from facing eviction. Plus, dust off your cowboy boots, the Snake River Stampede. It's back. How you can get in on the action. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Here's a look at temperatures right now across the Treasure Valley. We're looking at the high 50s to low 60s range right now over in Boise. 62 degrees is the temperature over in Ontario. It's 58 degrees down in Mountain Home, a little bit cooler at 52 degrees. And then up in the mountains, McCall is sitting at 64 degrees and Stanley is there at 29 degrees. Very cold up there in the mountains. As for today, it's going to be a hot one here in Boise, 98 degrees as the high we're looking at a clear morning with sunshine coming out early and then we'll see those hot temperatures coming out this afternoon. Now, Futurecast showing us what we can expect for the next few days in terms of cloud cover. We're seeing little clouds throughout the bottom part of our state, but in the Treasure Valley, very, very clear and we're going to see those blue skies and that sunshine out and about today. Those high temperatures, 98 as I said in Boise. Over in Caldwell, we're looking at 98 degrees there as well. Over in East Eastern Oregon, 100 degrees there. Down in Mountain Home will come up to 98 degrees. And then over in the mountains, McCall's looking at 86 degrees and Idaho City at 93. If you're going mountain biking today, it'll be a lot cooler this morning, so that's when you should go biking. But if you want to go a little bit later today, it will be hotter, so stay hydrated and stay safe out there. Thank you, Vasily. Yeah, the foothills probably beautiful this morning. It is 631 on your Tuesday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look, everything running smoothly out there this morning. That is what we want to hear. So when you do eventually get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And we start with continuing coverage of the fire at the Idaho Youth Ranch Warehouse in Boise. Now it started yesterday afternoon, still smoldering as of this morning. Idaho Youth CEO Scott Curtis, he says the fire started in a cardboard box in an outdoor storage area and then spread to the side of the building. They say this fire, it'll be a huge setback in their thrift store operations. But the thrift stores are huge. And so for us tomorrow, it's really about assessing what's happened here. Um, and looking at how can we get back up to full operations as quickly as possible uh, because uh, those funds are really needed for the programs. About 125 workers were inside the building when the fire broke out. Thankfully, though, no one got hurt. The cause of the fires is still under investigation this morning and crews will be on scene throughout the morning to make sure things are safe. A wildfire is burning in the Salmon Chalice National Forest. It's the Moose Fire. It's now scorched 1,000 acres so far. 
fire bosses. They say it's still very active, being pushed by dry, hot winds. And be advised, several Forest Service roads are closed northwest of the town of Salmon. Switching gears this morning, the number of evictions are climbing here in the Treasure Valley. So if you're struggling to come up with money to pay rent, help is still available. CBS 2's Angela Kernel shares some tips that could mean the difference between staying in your home or getting evicted. Over the last month, we've seen historic highs with the number of evictions happening in the Treasure Valley. Ali Rabi is the director of Jesse Tree. It's an organization that works to prevent evictions that she says are rising along with the cost of renting. Rent has increased by 40% in Ada County over the last couple of years. With growth in the Treasure Valley, I think rising rents are going to continue to be a challenge for a lot of folks. More people moving here even as more local landlords are cashing out and selling their rental properties. What's more, investment groups that own rental properties in Idaho are more aggressive in taking people to court who are behind on their payments. It's just creating kind of the perfect storm. If you're caught in that storm, she warns, you've got to show up in court. If you don't show up, you'll probably get a default judgment against you. Court is being held on Zoom and a lot of folks we're seeing are older or disabled and on fixed incomes, and they might not know how to use Zoom, might not have a computer, or uh, even internet. Still, mediation is available through the courts. Jesse Tree can help with that. Also, Jesse Tree may be able to help with rental assistance. So far, they've distributed more than two of its three million in federal grant funds. The needs are so great. Even with that grant, Jesse Tree is turning away like 75% of the people who apply. Money is also available through both the Boise City Ada County Housing Authority or the Idaho Housing and Finance Association. Some people only need about 400 bucks. Some people need 4,000, some people need more. Uh, what's great right now is we do have flexibility to be able to get people what they need. And you can find more information on IdahoNews.com. Well, switching gears this morning, you have a chance to weigh in on the City of Boise's proposed 2023 budget. There's a hearing today. The proposed general budget, about $306 million. The mayor says it brings property tax relief to homeowners, directs resources to help keep Boise safe, as well as climate action. At the public hearing, it starts at 6 o'clock at Boise City Hall. And dust off your cowboy boots, folks. The 107th annual Snake River Stampede in Nampa opens tonight. The Stampede, it's recognized as one of the top 10 professional rodeos in the U.S. Many contestants already inside the Ford Idaho Center competing just to qualify. The fastest wildest show on earth, you know, because we have great competition in all the events, the bareback, bull riding. Tickets, they're available for purchase both online and at the door. Those doors open at 530 each night with the rodeo starting at 7 sharp. For more information, we do have a link to the Snake River Stampede's website. Just head on over to IdahoNews.com. And looking ahead, the most exciting event of the summer just one month away. CBS is proud to be the official TV sponsor of the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. We've teamed up with the radio stations of Town Square Media and CapEd Credit Union to make this year's event possible. Now, for those of you new to the area, it's one of the family-friendly events that you don't want to miss. It's a hot air balloon festival and the balloons. They launch from Ann Morrison Park in Boise. This year's event starts with Cap Ed Kids Day on Wednesday, August 31st. It's an opportunity for younger children, elementary, maybe early middle school aged children to come out and receive a free tethered hot air balloon ride. Tethered means that it's still at the ground with a rope. They go up maybe 25, 30 feet but it gives them an uh, opportunity to be introduced to the wonder of flight. Parents and grandparents, it's the perfect photo and science opportunity for your kids and grandkids. You'll hear a lot more about the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic in the coming weeks. We do have interviews lined up with their pilots for later this week. The Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic is August 31st through September 4th. All you need to know is on IdahoNews.com stare at that view all day. 
Oh, it's beautiful. One of my favorite things about the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic, other than obviously the balloons, they are the main event, but it's the sunrises each and every morning. And it's a beautiful day out there this morning, kicking it off on a little bit cooler note. We're feeling that, but those temperatures, they're going to rear their ugly heads once again today. Oh yeah, they will. It's <laughs> yeah, it's a lot cooler right now, but temperatures are going to start heating up very, very quickly today. And they're going to be hot for the next couple days as well. We're going to see those rising temperatures and those maybe triple digit temperatures in the next coming days. Today in uh, across the western part of the United States, here in Boise, we're at 98 degrees right now. But throughout the entire western part of the United States, we are experiencing high temperatures over in Medford, 100 degrees just west of us, and 106 in Redding and 103 in Sacramento. So high temperatures in Northern California and in Southern Oregon. Futurecast showing us what we can expect for the next few days in terms of cloud cover. And we are seeing low pressure to the north and to the south of us, which is pushing high pressure into our area, which is why we are seeing those high temperatures we have been seeing over the past couple days. Now the high temperatures for today, as I said, 98 degrees here in Boise. Over in Mountain Home, we'll see 98 degrees as well and 98 degrees in Caldwell. Over in Ontario is where we'll see those triple digit temperatures, 100 degrees expected over in Eastern Oregon. And then up in the mountains, 86 degrees expected in McCall and 84 degrees expected over there in Stanley. Now, what to expect for the next few days? We have some very toasty temperatures expected today. Lots of sunshine is also expected this week. And tomorrow is where we'll see it turn hot in the Boise area. That's where we'll see it hit 100 degrees, maybe even 100 degrees the next day as well. And we'll see sun through the week and especially through the weekend as well. Lots of sunshine is expected. And so for the next few days, today is supposed to be 98, as I said, and that'll jump up to 101 degrees Wednesday. That's where we'll breach that triple digit mark. And we will continue to breach that as well. 102 degrees expected on Thursday. Now jumping into the weekend, we'll drop back down to 96 degrees both on Friday and Saturday, which is the average temperature for this time of year. So lots of sunny and hot temperatures expected over the next few days. Thank you, Vasily. It is 640 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it over to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk Traffic Center. Good morning, Ron. How's it looking? Well, good morning. Uh, looking good, really. Overall, we've got a uh, little more volume now, of course, than earlier, but uh, nothing big going. Sun glare, here comes the sunshine. That could be a little bit of an issue, depending on the actual angle of your drive. Got to be careful. But uh, the merge slowdowns we often get so far, say, at 10-mile Meridian Road, have been very minimal, if any. And nothing else big to report. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Boyan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. Well, now it's time for our question of the day. The question is about 130 million Americans do this every year, usually in the summer. All right, Vasily, what are we thinking? I'm going to stick with my answer right now. Just something in the water. I'm going to say either boating or swimming, I guess. But swimming is a little bit broad. 130 million Americans. I know that's a lot, but I feel like it's a, more than that. So. <laughs> a little bit more than that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've been kind of percolating on it. Uh, maybe going to an amusement park. Oh, that's a good one. That's one of those yeah, that, yeah. I was going to say, very first job yeah. was at Silverwood uh, Amusement Park. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I, I love like, Silverwood. Shout out. Um, uh, maybe leaping off a rope swing. I know that's one thing I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to doing yep, this weekend. In. All right, James says a barbecue. Mm, uh, that's a good one. One of my favorite, it's my favorite meal, barbecue in mm -hmm. general, but especially in the summer, something so special about it. All right, let's see what else. Richard, having a yard sale. Mm, didn't like think about that one. that one either. That's a really good guess. Yeah, one of my favorite things to scout, through, scout out during the weekends. Dan says going to the beach. Yeah, and then never leaving the beach. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's the main one. All right. Hey, some good answers out there. Again, you still have about 15 minutes to guess. You can do that on our Facebook page or our Twitter. Again, we'll read the answer right before CBS this morning. Oh, now I want to go to the beach, Vasily. All right. Still to come on CBS 2 News, families renewing calls for accountability in Uvalde, Texas. Why the new report on the police school response of the school shooting there has parents up in arms.
Here's a look at the CBS2 Adventure Weather Local Forecast over in Emmett. 99 degrees expected as a high there. That'll drop to 64 degrees tonight. But by tomorrow, we're going to reach that triple digit mark. 103 degrees expected in Emmett tomorrow. And then up in the mountains in Cascade tomorrow or today is supposed to be 88 degrees. That'll drop down to 48 degrees tonight. But by tomorrow, it'll jump right back up. 92 degrees expected as the high tomorrow in Cascade. Thank you, Vasily. It is 645 on your Tuesday. Well, the Texas Department of Public Safety says it's reviewing the actions of each and every police officer who responded to the Uvalde school shooting. That's the one that claimed the lives of two teachers and 19 fourth graders. A preliminary report says inaction by law enforcement. It may have contributed to the tragedy. CBS's Harvey Biggs has the latest, including parents once again demanding accountability. Grief and anger continue to be on display in Uvalde, Texas. For the injustice that has gone to our children. This was the scene last night as angry parents and residents sounded off at the local school board meeting. They want to know what is being done to safeguard the schools in the future. Many also calling for District Police Chief Pete Arredondo to be let go. If he's not fired by noon tomorrow, then I want your resignation and every single one of you board members because y'all do not give a damn about our children or us. State police officials have blamed Arredondo for failing to take charge of the situation. But a preliminary report just released by a Texas House Investigative Committee says other agencies should have stepped up and assumed command. The investigation found, quote, egregiously poor decision making at the heart of the botched response to the shooting. We gotta get in there. We gotta get in there. He just keeps shooting. Surveillance video shows police arrived at the school within minutes of the first 911 calls. A total of 376 law enforcement officers from nearly two dozen federal, state, and local agencies descended on the scene. They waited over an hour before moving to take the gunman down. Hey, we're going in and we're staying here. What are we doing? School officials told parents they're considering delaying the start of next school year to make sure more safety measures are in place. Harvey Biggs, CBS News, New York. Chief Arandondo has been placed on administrative leave as the acting chief of the city police on the day of the shooting. Well, two former White House aides expected to testify at Thursday's hearing for the January 6th committee. The AP reports that former Deputy National Security Advisor Matthew Pottinger and former press aide Sarah Matthews are the two testifying. Now, both of them resigned from the Trump White House after the events of January 6th. Thursday's hearing will be the eighth and possibly final hearing, but the committee says the investigation is still active. Well, in the meantime, Russian President Vladimir Putin visiting Iran today. The Kremlin says Putin part is participating in talks with Iranian and Turkish leaders about issues in the region. Now, Putin's visit comes after U.S. officials said last week that they believe Iran is preparing to supply Russia with aerial vehicles to use in the ongoing war in Ukraine. Now, this also comes just days after President Biden visited Israel and Saudi Arabia in the Middle East. Well, the U.S. expected to soon put more sanctions on Russia as it continues its invasion into Ukraine. Now, those sanctions may impact our already high gas prices. That does bring us to gas prices here in Idaho. Our average sitting at 5.11 a gallon. That is 61 cents higher than the national average. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up still going to be Costco. You can get it for 5 cents cheaper than yesterday at 4.95 a gallon. All right, well. People hitting the road this morning, stepping out the door. Nice, kind of a little bit cooler as you're stepping out this morning. I definitely at least noticed mm -hmm. it. Feels kind of nice out there, would I say? I don't know. It's been so hot out recently. Yesterday, we were everybody up in the newsroom was joking that it was the cooler day, but you really couldn't tell. So today, a little bit warmer. Maybe mm -hmm. we might not feel that yeah, either. <laughs> we'll it's see. definitely going to be a little bit warmer today than it was yesterday. Yesterday was definitely the cool off day, mm -hmm. but still not that cool. It was, only, it was 89 degrees as the high yesterday. And so today it's jumping up and it'll keep rising as well. Temperatures right now, however, as Sarah said, they're a lot cooler than they've been 
over the past couple days. 62 as the high here in Boise. Over in Caldwell, the temperature right now is 59 degrees, and in Ontario, it's 58 degrees there. And then down Mountain Home, it's 52 degrees as the high there. And then up in the mountains, 44 degrees in McCall as the uh, temperature right now, and 29 degrees in Stanley. Very, very chilly up in the mountains right now. Your out the door forecast for you. It's going to start heating up very quickly today by 1 p.m. It'll be 87 degrees and that'll jump up to our highs today by 5 and 7 p.m. Temp high temperatures today. We are expecting 98 degrees here in Boise over in Emmett. 99 degrees is expected as the high and then in Mountain Home 98 degrees is expected as the high there and then up in the mountains 86 degrees as a high in McCall and 93 degrees expected as a high here in Idaho over in Idaho. Idaho City. And for the Treasure Valley, we are going to see that heat start to heat up even more on Wednesday and Thursday. That's where we'll break that triple digit mark. 101 on Wednesday and 100 on Thursday. By Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we'll drop back down around the average of 94 degrees and 96 degrees on Sunday, and then it'll continue to heat up into Monday. And then in, uh, in the mountains, Wednesday and Thursday are going to be the hottest days of the week at 89 degrees. We'll drop back around the average Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and and into Monday, it'll heat up as well. Thank you, Vasily. It is 651 on your Tuesday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's send it out to Ron O'Brien for a last check from the News Talk Traffic Center. Hi, Ron. Good morning. Hi there, uh, not uh, doing bad overall. I-84, very minimal, if any, crowding in Meridian. Very, very minimal. Not much going. Uh, sun glare to deal with. Got to be a little careful with that. Uh, some buildups are starting to show up a little bit more so away from the freeways. Volume increases. Spots like Karcher Road and Nampa after Middleton Road tying into the boulevard. Highway 2026 starting to get a little more consistent backing eastbound at Middleton Road and the lights red. Spots like that. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News, the location for the 2028 Olympic Games announced how the city of Los Angeles is celebrating as the games head back to the U.S. And our chime in photo of the day. It's a shot from downtown Boise, a beautiful evening shot at that. Thank you to Logan for sending this in to submit your photos. You can head to IdahoNews.com slash chime in. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 6.55 on your Tuesday. Welcome back. The MLB All-Star Game is tonight. Los Angeles hosting the world's largest baseball festival at its convention center. Take a look at this. Now a traveling Hall of Fame set up at the convention center as people get ready for the first pitch. We're a gigantic footprint in DTLA. MLB Live in DTLA is what we've been calling it. Uh, plenty of activities outdoors for fans. We have a block party. We have DJs. We have, we have a house band because you know everybody in LA has a house band. The American League All-Star Team is taking on the National League All-Star Team. Now that All-Star Game first pitch starts tonight at 6 o'clock p.m. And looking ahead, the 2028 Olympic and Paralympic Games, they'll be headed to Los Angeles. It'll be the first time that Los Angeles will host the Paralympic Games. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti made the announcement at the Exhibition Park just yesterday. I'm just proud of L.A. for winning this. Um, <laughs> we won the gold medal already, but I'm really proud of getting the Paralympics for the first time. No. Um, you know, third time for Olympics is an honor beyond what most cities get. But I also hope that we'll take this to make LA the most accessible city in the country. The grand ceremony, it'll take place at the LA Memorial Coliseum and SoFi Stadium out in Inglewood. Save that pool looking nice right now. <laughs> All right, now it's time for our question of the day. About 130 million Americans do this every year, usually in the summer. The answer? Play mini golf, wow. Oh, lots of fun. Maybe get out there, have some fun today. We'll see you back here at 11. Take the news with you on the radio, News Talk KBOI, and for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Morning.